Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? It's the Ramble, it's Alex Bennett. We go until uh, midnight Eastern Time on the East Coast of the United States. We're coming to you out of New York City and over there on the other side of the room, I just woke her up. <laughs> there she is. What? I woke you up, didn't I? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she uh, she was uh, she was dozing off watching Lorena, Lorena Bobbitt dick cut off people's dicks. <laughs> Boy, you'll watch anything. Won't you? <laughs> Go back you, you, into this landfill, and pick it up, <laughs> and I put it in ice and brought it to the hospital. Is this the one where they interview the guy who put it back on? Yeah, the yeah I think I saw there. that documentary. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they put it back on, and uh, what the, what it, what it was is she uh, she cut off his dick and threw it, and then she panicked, got in the car, went for a drive, and, and threw it, and threw it out the window. Luckily, the cops were able to find it. <laughs> I wonder how they picked it up. Did they just uh, <laughs> did they have tongs or something? <laughs> I mean, you pick it up. No, you pick it up. No, you pick it up. <laughs> I, uh, I I always said that one of the uh, uh, low points of my life was <laughs> I was at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch for one of Dennis Hoff's birthdays, okay, one of his parties that he had there. And I was there, and all of a sudden, uh, there's a person going around taking pictures of people with people and everything. And uh, the photographer says, well, the three of you please get together and let me take a picture of this. And click, he clicks the frame. And I look, and on one side of me is uh, is uh, what's his name, J Jerry Buttafuoco, Joey Buttafuoco, <laughs> <Joey Buttafuco. laughs> and on the other side is John Wayne Bobbitt. <laughs> and all I could think to myself was, "This may be the lowest I've gone Absolutely. in my life." <laughs> and you know something? I didn't think about it, but I should have asked for a copy of that picture. Yeah. Wouldn't, I, I wish I had it right now to show to everybody. Oh, that would have been hysterical. most people don't even believe I was between those two people. But somehow, Dennis always managed to get the most notorious people he could lay his hands on <laughs> and get him to come to his parties. And there I am, between John Wayne Bobbitt and That's so Joey Buttafuoco. And I had not talked to them in the entire evening. It's just I was there, and the photographer pushed these two people next to me and said, let me take a picture. <laughs> so... Yeah. There it goes. Uh, he made a porn film. Which one? John Wayne Bobbitt. Did anyone see the results of the surgery? Yes, that's what the film was. Was it a good stitching? I have no idea. I couldn't watch it. It was directed by uh, Ron Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing missing out of that picture was Ron Jeremy, but I like Ron. Ron Ron's okay. I'm in you pain. Know, you can't hate rain. What? <laughs> You're in, I'm in pain. I've got this shooting pain going down my arm. Uh, you know, we really have to stop this. <laughs> we really have to stop this. Uh, so how are you? Well, my arm's hurting today. Well, it how is, are you? Well, my bottom of my foot's hurting me. Well, how are you? Well, I got this thing with I my tooth. And I got the, the yeah. It, 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 this house looks like rehab. <laughs> okay, because all uh, you know in our bedroom, it's like a rolling gym, <laughs> and you've got all these things you do in I the know. bedroom. If I brought that much stuff into the bedroom to do something I wanted to do, you you'd put tell that me... much stuff into this room and that room. <laughs> so there, in that room, yeah, yeah. You well, time. you've got you've got the living room, you've got the dining room. You've got those. the bedroom is yours. You, that's your territory. I'll say the bedroom. All, all is those mine. territory. The kitchen. You really have dominion over the kitchen. I don't cook anymore. You don't. I do all the cooking. <laughs> really, I do all the cooking, and I'm not. I'm not bad, am I? <laughs> it's not like I get a dinner. I'll get a hamburger. 
Yeah. No salad, no vegetable, hamburger. Well, I, I don't make the full course meal because you won't <laughs> you won't eat the full course meal. You barely get through the hamburger. <laughs> there we go. Uh -huh. There we go. When can we stop with that? I don't know, but I I, don't... I was thinking that if I get the prostate cancer and I have to have these hormone shots every month, how do we go on vacation if I have to have them every month? Well, same way we're going on vacation now. What? what? The same way we've been going on vacation now but let's say i want to start doing vacation yeah i'll believe it when I, I guess i can it. go a couple of weeks yeah, without i gotta it. go get a pill really i i have uh, one here wait a minute what do i have my here? back what do i have no, here? Uh, take I, my... th I think this is a vicodin i'm not sure no i don't want it wait a minute hold on no. a second it just might be a uh uh i don't know what Ibuprofen it is i don't know what it is i don't want it it says uh, something six eight something six I don't and want seven. It. I don't want well, it. Well, you so you want to go get it? No, I'll, I'll wait until huh? sixteen minutes. So I I was thinking last night I I had a little something. I thought maybe I'd talk about it with you today. Go ahead. Because it's something that I suddenly realized that uh, you know as I'm getting older I start realizing these various things about my life. Uh, like uh, like having this interview last night with Ted Randall. That for was instance. very good, by the way. Yeah, um, but uh, I I and I said I think I expressed this once to Ronnie when we were married. I said the problem is the one thing you do, never will understand about me, okay, is that I was a show business kid, because you have no idea what it's like to grow up as a show business kid. Well, no, I don't. You know, and my father was in show business. I mean, my father was a musician, and in order to make a living, he would sometimes have to travel for extended periods of time up and down the coast of California with mm -hmm. the band orchestra that he was with. And I would hear from him by telephone, or and he would write me all the time from every place that he was. But I knew what it was like, and I knew what it was like also because I stayed up later than most kids would stay up, so my father could see me when he got home from working at 2 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the morning. So, I mean, I grew up as a showbiz kid, and that's an entirely different way of growing up. It's different than any of the other families that were around I grew around up as a school teacher's kid. Yeah. Very boring. Yeah. But no, so uh, nobody really truly understands that. And I don't think neither have the people I've worked with over the years, you know, because I work in radio, and radio is kind of pseudo show business. It's not really show business. It's it's uh, how how can I put it? Uh, it's faux. If it's it's not really show business. Okay. Oh, do you want to do you want to leave? And I can just talk about this to the no, audience. I hear it. No. Um, but you're saying this, I can't talk. What? I can't talk. What do you mean you can't talk? You said, do you want to leave? I said, no. No, well, I mean, you're, you're in pain, you say. Well, I so. am. Yeah. I'm waiting it out. Well, why don't you go get a pill or something? Okay, I'm going to say good night. You're going to say good night? Yeah, you're just going to do your story. Okay, well, well it would be nice to have somebody react to well, it. Well, I'll come back. I'll come back. What are you doing? You're going out to get... Medication. Yeah, she's going out to get her medication. Okay. Uh, anyway, the thing was that I never, I never felt that radio was really show business uh, because the people working in it really weren't show business people. They were, I don't know how to put it. It's really strange. But uh, so I, I was kind of different than all the other people who worked radio with me because I came from a show business family. I was brought up for lack of a better term, like they used to say in show business, in a trunk, you know. Uh, and and uh, most people do not understand that, and, they, and so therefore, they really never understood that about me. Uh, and, and so I always felt that at radio stations, I was, oh, here she is, she's back again. Uh, I always felt at radio stations, um, uh, they didn't understand me completely. Because everything that I did in radio, I did from the standpoint that I was doing, I was putting on a show, okay? Right. And while everybody would call their program shows, they really weren't. You know, they were just disc jockeys. <laughs> they were record players or they were talk show hosts or whatever. But they really weren't in show business. And everything I did, 
I looked at from a from a show business standpoint. Am I boring you? No, no, no. Yeah. It's just tired. Uh, uh, a show business standpoint. So I I kind of feel that that hurt me in the business because at least in the business I chose, I perhaps I should have just gone into movies or something like that or and uh, you know something where where it was actually show business. Ah. You know. You were on the cusp. Cusp? No, I was no I no, I always treated my radio career as show business. As a wannabe. No, not as a wannabe. <laughs> you don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. I See, do. I'm that's only, what I'm saying. You I'm don't, only kidding. No, but you don't you don't understand what it's like to grow up uh, in a you know, like a, a kid in a uh, what do you call it? In a in in a show business family. And so I got I, I grew up as show business and uh, there's no business like yeah. show business. And I just feel that in my whole career, the business never understood me. You know, I always reason I always had a bad time with the business was because uh, I was trying for one thing, which was to entertain, okay? And these other people were out to do something else. Out to play I, a record. Out to play a record, yeah, yeah. Like I never, I never really enjoyed being a disc jockey. I mean, in the beginning, I was because that's what you had to be in order to get a job. But uh, I was not a really big into 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 being a disc jockey because the part about being a disc jockey I didn't like was that every time I played a record, I was using somebody else's talent. Hmm. You know, I was relying on somebody else's talent hmm. for the content of the program. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I just feel that, that and, and none of the women I ever married, I think totally understood what it was like to grow up like I grew up. Good. And, I, and, and there's no way I can impart to you how it was different except that it was. And, and when I went to school, it was different. Well, you know, what does your father do? My father has a real estate uh, company uh, in Larkspur. And what does your father do? My father's a dentist. What does your father do? One of the fathers was a prison, uh, the prison <laughs> librarian at San Quentin. <laughs> And then they say, what does your father do? And you say, oh, he's a violinist. And they go, oh, really? Really, you can earn a living playing a violin? <laughs> you know, that's not what dads do. <laughs> you know, dads go to work and, and whatever. So uh, I, I, you know, I never felt that, uh, that even the kids that I grew up with totally understood the kind of life I came from. And I always felt, I think... As I look back on it, I'm beginning to understand a little bit of why I've always felt a little strange and a little not the same as anybody else. Um, and even kids today who are like, you know, people who grow up and are movie stars and things like that, sometimes didn't come from a show business background. So now their kids are learning what it's like to be it's strange in show business. Well, you know, what does your daddy do? Well, he's an actor, <laughs> you know. Um, so I, uh, you know, I have always felt a little, a little strange that way. And I, I was trying to ascertain why. See, I was thinking they, there was a, like a, there's this a team that was in uh, L.A. on KROQ called Kevin and Bean. And they announced that Bean is retiring. He's quitting the show after 30 years. Mm. Why didn't I ever have a show for 30 years? <laughs> why is that I had them for like, I think the longest period of time I had a show may have been either Live 105 in San Francisco or Sirius XM. Everything else, I was good for about five years. Wow. You know, and it wasn't that I left them, they left me. And I think it was because I just came, was coming from a different place. They never quite understood me. They never got it. Yeah. Because, you know, when you got a guy as a general manager of a radio station, what's his biggest job? His big... Most general managers for radio stations came out of uh, being salesmen at the station. So now he's your boss, and he's running the show. And you're the expert in doing show business, and he's the expert in selling shoes. And yet he is now saying, that wasn't a good show this morning. Or, you know what? how your show would be better if you did this? You know, and you go, wait a minute. Um... Uh, you're talking to a, I'm, I can't, I, nobody ever looked upon me as the expert of how you do a show. Get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so because I came from that, that background, I, I think I was just a little stranger than most of these people had to put up well, with. Well, you were never appreciated. 
I don't know that I wasn't appreciated. I mean, I think I, was, I got more appreciated as I got older. Could be. You know, I came to New York and everybody was going, oh, Alex Bennett. Oh, sure, we remember you. Wait a minute, there's a problem. I don't have audio. Oh, boy. No one's listening well, to I, us? No, I don't have audio on the video. Is what, Oh, wait a minute. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, uh, excuse me. It was what happened last week. It's it's below. It's too low on the... There's three bars, and there was the third bar I had to look at. What? Oh, come on. I'm trying to talk. Okay, go yeah, ahead. You know. But do you understand any of that? A little bit. I mean, it's like you don't understand my creative genius. Well, no, I understand. Me, though. I understand creativity. You don't understand being an artist. Yes, I no, do. You don't. Because I no, consider my work an art. You don't understand my background. Yeah, but I've never seen you do it either as long as we've <laughs> known each other. You gave up on art a long time ago, and you I shouldn't did. have. You were terrific. I did. Why did you give up on it? I, I, I ran out of money. <laughs> I mean, I did. I guess painting is expensive, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I didn't paint small, and I the linen and the stretchers and the oils and the, the room to paint it. Well, in. Van Gogh was poor, and he managed to hack it. He sold his ear for money. Do you know he never? He only sold one painting in his entire life. Yeah, his brother sold the rest. His, his no, his brother bought it from him, <laughs> and and they only sold after he died. Yeah. So there's a guy who was unappreciated. Did the brother was the brother alive when? To get the money, Theo. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 The, well, Theo, I think, started selling them, uh, but they were never worth, you know, what. But they are today. But they are today. I mean, a Van Gogh goes for what? Uh, millions. Uh, millions and millions and millions and millions. You know. So, um, but uh, 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 you know, you know, I think I understand uh, what you, the process you go through. I mean, what goes through your head and what you're trying to do. But because I don't draw, because I, that is not my form of art, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't fully understand. I, I do appreciate the fact that you can even do it because I can barely draw a straight line. You know, so when I see what you've done, I go, you know, that's some, that's some amazing stuff. You some of your stuff's stuff? really good. Some of your yeah. stuff sucks, but some of your oh. stuff's really good. Well, just like some of my stuff yeah, sucks and my, some of my stuff's really good. You've never told me, though. Oh, no. I think uh, what I've seen is just uh, uh, really nice. Thank you. You know, I mean, I don't mind it hanging in this house, you know. Oh. There are a couple of them that I would take down and put better stuff up, but, you know. Where is all the really good? Is there more stuff? There are more paintings somewhere, aren't there? They're all over the place. Even in this apartment, they're all over the place. Uh, really? <laughs> they're not being, and they're not hung? Right. Right. You got them, like, stored in a closet or something. And rolled... Yeah, she she wanted to be, a, you know, why you never continued, I have no idea. I ran out of money. Yeah, and there was no way to make really make money out of it. Well, David and I split up, so we sold the loft. Yeah. So I had no place to paint. You need a lot of room for painting. For oh, the, yeah. Well, for the kind of stuff you well, do. Well, oil and life don't mix. I used to leave my shoes at the door of my studio, you know, and then get into my paint shoes. That's why you need a special place you yeah. go to and you paint. Exactly. And it's going to be have paint all over the place yeah. and it's going to be a mess. Yeah. And then another place where you live. And even though I had a designated space for my painting, it still gets... Well, you would have liked what I did in San Francisco. I had two apartments. Oh, one of the apartments nice. was used as a studio and an office. And the other one was, I said, would never be used as an office. The only thing I did was I had a computer in there so that I could check my mail and things like that. Okay. And that was it. All right, what? I think it's time. No, it's not time. Put my back. Well, then you can go. All right, can I say good night? Yes, you can. I'm say. sorry, everyone. I'm really have a pain. Uh, she's uh, she's an old lady. Wait till you see her walk out of the place. Stop. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me uh, let me just uh, do this. Mm. As you see her walk, look at her. Walking look at her. Fine. Look at look at that old lady I'm walk. Walking fine. You're walking fine. I'm walking, fine. walking fine. Yeah, yeah. Good so night. I need. Okay. Good night, dear. So anyway, I uh, uh, it it you know it it really is when I was a uh, when I was growing up, I just I never felt like uh, what was it, what, how am I how am I trying to put it here? I never felt that I was uh, understood by my by my friends or anybody else because I was just a little bit different, you know, and. Um, 
I think that's been the whole hallmark of my life. And it's funny that I'm thinking about all this stuff now. Uh, but it seems that when you get to be my age, you start, it's not reminiscing, but you start checking, you know, start thinking about this stuff. It really is uh, uh, amazing. So anyway, I was thinking about that last night, and I thought I would bring it up to her, but she was so tired tonight that uh, I couldn't get a good conversation going with her. So what the hell? Anyway, I'm, you know what I'm doing? I'm opening up the, uh, the Skype lines right now so you can call at this time, and um, we can talk with you if you want to if you want to call um, um uh, what, what what news was there today there wasn't anything really really big I, outside of the fact that what's his name that uh, um, guy who's on empire i forget his name now you know the kid who said he was beaten up and everything they decided to uh impanel the grand jury and they charged him with 16 felony counts uh, today, so he's in a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble. Uh, 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 what is it, J- 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 Jossie, Jesse, J- Jersey, Juicy? I can't remember. Forget it. But that was the only big piece of news to come out today. Uh, that and I, uh, uh, you know, just the normal stuff that they keep uh, blathering about. Anyway, our lines are open, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a bit on the tired side myself tonight, so uh, it would be nice if you called. Hold on a second. I'm looking at some other stuff here to make sure it's all working just fine. All right. Okay. And um, uh, if you want to know how to call our program, you use, you use a thing called Skype. Um, it's from a Microsoft, and it sucks. But it's the only thing we've got where we can put together what we call a citizen panel, and that is a group of people talking instead of just me and one other person. And uh, again, it's another feel-free night. Next week will be another feel-free week. Uh, and um, it has been going really well. You know, I mean, it, 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 we, we, it, people are, uh, it, it's, it's gotten really good, the, the discussions that we have and so on. So anyway, uh, I, you know, and, and people, if I say, like, I've opened the lines now early, right? Nobody calls. You know why? Because nobody tunes in to, like, uh, the 30-minute time frame. But here comes, Br- oh, here comes, here comes Chris Wallace, first of all. And then Bree is calling from Dubai. So wait a minute. Uh, Bree is calling from Dubai, uh, I think. Uh, uh, there's, 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 uh, Wall, uh, Charlie Wallace. Let me see here. There's Charlie and Bree. Are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me, Alex? Yeah, yeah. Can you show us your picture? Or are you not in the position to do I, that? Uh, Alex, I've got a special treat for you. What's that? I'm, wa- I'm walking there now. I just need a few minutes, please. Where are you okay. walking to? Ah, here it is. Really? Okay, I'm going to show you the picture, and you tell me where I am in the world. Okay, okay. okay where? Well, but first, you got to turn on your video. Uh, I'm a little tired because I've been walking to get here about yeah. an hour. About an hour. <laughs> so, okay. okay. Hello, Rob. Uh, you got to turn on your camera, though, otherwise we can't see. Guess where you are. Well, I've got to get there first. Okay. I'm very close. Oh, you're very close. Uh, and- to get out of this place yeah is it the burj khalifa no no okay well that's the only thing i know in dubai how would i know anything else what if i'm not in dubai oh well now that's uh that's that's interesting yeah Yeah. we lost we just lost charlie i I need about five (laughs) minutes to figure out how to exit this place because uh, very confusing, and the signage is terrible. Oh, okay. But when I show you, yeah, I, Rob will get it right away. I bet. <clears throat> Rob will get it right away. I think Rob will. Oh, okay. So that gives me a little hint, maybe. Well, it's like where in the world is Carmen San Diego, huh? <laughs> or where's Waldo? Yeah. Okay, I think I found an exit here. Oh, yes. Okay. Why? Fine. Where are you? Goodness. Are you like in a shopping mall or something like that, where you don't have uh, an exit? No, I'm in a convention center. Okay, here we go. You ready? Okay. 
Okay, let's see. I'm not guaranteeing that this will work, but we'll see. Okay, he's okay. Okay. Uh, turn sideways yeah. so we get so we get a, a wide view of you. There we go. Okay, so where are you? You're in. Uh, is that Shanghai? No. Wait a minute. Uh, is wait, where? Where is that? I know that. Well, the only. I mean, you said I might get it. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. Singapore. No. No, that's not Singapore. Singapore doesn't uh. have the kind of architecture. I mean, it looks like Shanghai to me because of those towers, but, um, wow. I have, you know, those buildings are, the ones in the front are kind of Western looking. You know Look at the two connected. Look at those towers connected. Yeah, but that uh, I remember seeing those two towers in a in a in a Sean Connery film that was done in I believe <laughs> Shanghai or uh, <laughs> Singapore. No, <Yeah>. you guys. <laughs> and it's not Shanghai. So call in. So call in now, folks. Sh uh, what's the number, Alex? Wait a minute, <laughs> Shanghai. No, incorrect. Eh, wrong. But that, am I right? Were those two things in a movie with Sean Connery? They, they were in a movie. Okay, but, so uh, where was he? I, th they, I thought he was in I'm, the either. We keep we keep losing Charlie. I, I thought we were he was in either Singapore or Shanghai. Well, you're close. I think that uh, we've got to have callers call in or people who you know, <laughs> tune in now. Look at the video. Yeah. And tell us where I am. Well, well, I'm walking to them now because I'm I'm meeting a friend for lunch inside. But okay, not wait a minute. There's Shanghai. Place. There's Singapore. There's uh, Hong Kong, but that's not Hong Kong. It is, maybe. Is that Hong nope. Kong? No, it's not Hong no. Kong. Uh, but I do know the buildings. I I identified <laughs> where I've seen them before, and I thought that was okay, shot. So that so they've so this city has got to work on their branding if they if they can't get you, Alex. Hmm. And Alex, you know, uh, you were also talking about the radio, and I under, I understand what you're saying because sometimes you you're you have to be show business, and sometimes you're not because sometimes you have to like go to a mall and you have to, you know, you I I, I used to do this when I was in uh, undergrad, mm -hmm. and I started a radio station at the same time you were at Live 105. Um, but I started it in Pittsburgh, yeah. and this was after our main station had gone off the air. And by the way, uh, our station was the first station outside of New York to play the alternative music uh, format. It was called Double X, and it was based on WLIR and Larry the Duck um, out of New York City. Yeah. And they came to Pittsburgh. Anyway, they closed down, but everybody had loved the station, and I was working for the college station at the time so I took over an AM station and I programmed alternative music and, and it got ratings for the first time in its history and so I know what you're saying most of the time we're just in a room talking to ourselves but sometimes you have to be a showman and I was never comfortable with that I you know I preferred being in the room and just talking to people right right going out and meeting them not so much. Well, I, I always, I, oh, as I said earlier, I think I always felt that I, 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 the radio was the place I could perform, but I didn't necessarily feel comfortable in radio because I wasn't really a radio guy. You know what I'm saying? It's really strange because of my upbringing. Uh, so anyway, now what I've, that was in the Sean Connery film, and it had to be one of those <laughs> cities. Um. You can't, you're not going to, can anybody, uh, if, 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 how much is it? Huh? 45 Ringa? Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah. What's Ringa. He, what was he trying to sell you? Well, there's a clue. Wait a minute, let me look up the Ringa. Uh, <laughs> R-I-N-G-A. You guys are terrible. Let me see. The Ringa. That's I can't believe somebody is going to call in. Yeah, wait a minute. 45 is way too high. That's like, uh. 12 US dollars for a little clip on to your phone to give you wide angle lens. Oh, really? I guess I can buy that and show you the wide angle of this, but I, I think it's pretty clear right now, right? Yeah, no, no. I know the building. I identified it for you, <laughs> but I but I can't remember where that movie was shot. Uh, we're, we're taking we're taking callers now and be the seventh caller to identify the building and you will win 100 Gavnet dollars. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, the hell with it. Give him a thousand cabinet yeah. dollars. <laughs> thousand cabinet dollars is you can identify the building. Yeah. Hmm. I, I see. That's what we've been doing. Wait, 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 wait. Be the fourth caller, and there's no commercials, and all hits in sir, a row. Sir, sir, e, uh, what's that oh, say? I might be giving it away. I can't go there. Let me see here. Surya. Oh, yeah. yeah thanks. Uh, let me see here. It's okay. They said that they can see it. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> uh, is it in Malaysia? You got it, Alex. Yeah, because I, I just looked up the Surya, and it said Malaysia. <laughs> You cheater! Yeah, but what's what city in Malaysia? Oh, I'm in Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. We had an office there at a company I worked for. Really? Going yeah. back to this because I look like an idiot. So sorry about it. But uh, no, you don't look like an idiot. Well, when I'm holding my phone like that, plus I got to get inside. I'm I'm starting to sweat. Yeah, mm. it, it's pretty hot. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it is. So I what, mean, it's nothing like Dubai in the summer, but yeah. it's, it's pretty darn close. What do you, pretty darn close. Well, right it's, now, it's, Dubai, oh, God, we have beautiful weather in Dubai. Yeah. Just beautiful. Well, what, are you, what are you weather, doing? What, what, are you, what are you doing in Kuala Lumpur? <clears throat> I've been invited here to give a talk. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that's on Monday. So I, I, I've been here many times before, so I have friends in the city. Uh, <clears throat> I had some friends who were going to fly in but didn't get a chance. The timing didn't work out. Uh, yeah. But I'll be back over again. Uh, in June, I'll be in Bangkok. And uh, we'll see. Yeah. Well, anyway, so good. Terrific. So, uh, so, so, so that's the treat for you, Alec. Yeah. It's funny. I always wanted to do that in Dubai. I wanted to wake up early, yeah, and you know, and and go to the Burj Khalifa and show you that, yeah, or the Burj Al Arab. But I never got up early enough. And also, I don't think that the Skype worked in Dubai. We tried it once, if you remember, uh, on the 4G. It doesn't work. They shut it down. I think that you have to be on a Wi-Fi that where they allow it. You know. Yeah. Well, you're you're just using regular phone service where you are now, right? Right. I'm just using the regular cell uh, cell phone service. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Don't you pay through the nose for that? Absolutely not. Well, so cheap. Much really? Much cheaper here. Much cheaper here than Dubai. Yeah. Uh, in Dubai, I pay through the nose. But and I could and I don't get most things. They don't like Skype. They don't like FaceTime. They don't let WhatsApp uh, or Viber or anything. But here in KL, I can use it all, and it all works. So, you know, a lot of people have written in the newspapers in Dubai, uh, even businessmen, saying, you know, get with it, Dubai. You've got to, you've got to realize that you can't charge a toll on, yeah. uh, on this. It, you know, but they still do. A and I think it must be for security reasons. That that's the only thing that makes sense to me, because Dubai is forward-thinking in every other area. So. Yeah. By the way, Richard Johansson, who uh, is in Oslo, who is in Norway, uh, wrote and just said uh, Kuala Lumpur. So he knew it, I think, before I did. I didn't see it over on the side where he had written it in. So you win the prize, uh, Richard, and uh, I don't it, it, come on to New York and pick it up. I have no idea what the prize is, however, you know. Anyway, um, now what? This is what? This is just a. a a shopping mall in Kuala Lumpur, right? That's right. I'm going to take you down to the lower level where they have more uh, Malaysian uh, trinkets for sale, and I'll show yeah. you the T-shirts and some of the items that you can buy as a tourist. Good. Uh, hello, Jason. How are you? Hola. Did you know he was in Kuala Lumpur when you saw those yes, buildings? Yes. Well, I, I looked it up online. I put in skyscrapers bridge. Yeah. <laughs> and it right up. So I, I was trying to call in, but I was too yeah. slow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, as soon as I saw that sign, well, we I just did, put in the name. I put in the name of the sign, and it well, said Malaysia. So. Yeah. Well, you kinda, I mean. You could have just kept guessing. I mean, especially. I mean, don't you see the. the you know the the people and the way they're dressed. Uh, 
That yeah. would have given it away to me. Boy, you've got a great signal in there. Is, are you on Wi-Fi now, I guess, maybe? No, I'm on 4G. Wow. Don't worry, I've got, uh, I got 15 GB. 4G so LTE. I've, I've got 15 gigabytes for seven days. I think I'll be fine. And even uh, when I, on Sunday, I'll be on Wi-Fi. Well, wait a minute. Of the time. 15 gigabytes for seven days? How, how much did that yeah. cost you? That cost me. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm not gonna pay that much. No, uh, <laughs> it cost me. It cost me about eleven dollars. Wow. In the U.S., that would be cheap. In the U.S., you yeah. you couldn't get that. You go to I Europe. Get... You go to Europe and you buy a uh, 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 time for foreign places before you leave here, and you pay thirty bucks for something like three hundred megs or something like that. Some. Um, yeah. Am I right? Yeah, uh, just jailbreak your phone and get a get a uh, sim card wherever you're going and it's cheap yeah yeah well yeah, you, i talked to some guy when i was in uh, canada one time he was from england and he was telling me how cheap it was to buy data you know over back in uh, europe and it was it was ridiculous because there's so many competitors that the prices yeah. drop so far well my mm -hmm. wife works with guy people who travel between here and beijing a lot and they have two phones and when they when they're in China, have, they you know I have they, they iPhones. Use... I well, have iPhones. Well, you know something. The newest iPhone supposedly can take two SIM cards, and you can have a SIM card for the country you're going yeah, to, and you can have standard. a SIM card for here. You know. The phone but, I'm on right now has two. Yeah. Uh, did you ever set that up, Al, uh, Rob? Yes, I did. It, did it work out for you all right? Or yeah, it works have... great. Yeah, absolutely, it works. Is that great. called the eSIM or something? Yeah. Yeah, but what do you so, use it for? So I have two phones. I have a business line. Yeah. And my personal cell line. And I used to always have to carry two phones. Now I only have to carry one phone. Okay, and that's the new. That's the newer. This uh, is the, the 10SX. The 10SX. Okay. Uh, and it will take two. So that if let's say I call you on your other line, that phone will ring too. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. In other words, it serves both. Yep, both uh, it's accounts. It's like almost the same thing back in the day, having distinctive ringing for a fax machine. You have well, two that, phone numbers, one phone, except for you can split it in half and have, you know, different profiles, right? Um, I can set up like all of my contacts. I set which phone number that, like, if I if I'm in my contacts and I click call someone, it automatically calls them from. If they're personal contacts from my personal number and vice versa. Same and, thing with text. And you can dictate which line it's going to use? Yeah, by selecting personal, whatever you label. I selected business and personal. And so if you go to the other line, let's say yeah. than the one you're on, you don't. It, it doesn't go through any process of changing. I mean, it's just, no. it's seamless, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just whichever line you select. Wow, that's great. That's terrific. works wonderful. No more two phones. Got to say, it's great. Yeah, you had to have yeah, two I, phones I, before. I almost cheated kind of doing the same thing. Like when I'm at work, boy, uh, our phones are tracked if we're driving. <laughs> right. So if you receive a call while you're driving, your boss gets pinged letting them know. So I just call forward my work phone to my personal phone. <laughs> and then uh, so during the day, uh, it just sucks at the end of the day, I have to uncall forward my work phone. But mm -hmm. I wish I could do it from my personal phone. So if I forgot and I'm home, I can just go doot, 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 uncall forward. But now wait a minute. So your that, boss is constantly checking to what to see if you're ripping them off? No, not ripping. If I'm using my phone while I'm driving. Yeah. So they're you know they have a program. If my vehicle is moving, and my phone is moving, and I answer my phone or do anything on my phone, they get a text notification letting them know that I'm moving and using my phone. Really. Oh yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> so that's why I just forward it to my personal phone. Just carry my personal phone and. There's no a durian king. <laughs> is is that the word for burger? No. Truly a, a durian is a durian is a famous fruit, Alex. I can't believe you haven't smell. heard of it. Yeah. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it it's tastes a, like amazing, but the smell is terrible. <laughs> smell is like ass. Really? Yeah, but see, the, Rob knows but, that. But the tape. Yeah. Alex, but, I can't believe it. You go out today and try They've got to have it in New York City somewhere. Find it. Mm, try very it. hard to find. 
Really? Yeah. Huh. So these are only in Malaysia, truly a piece of Malaysia. Here's King Kong on the Patronus Towers. Yeah. That? Yes. Is, <laughs> Hey, hey, there's Charlie. You're back again, Charlie. You had some problems? Yeah, I had to reboot my whole computer to get Skype to work. Oh, wow. Son of a bitch. Uh, let me see here. So uh, what are the what are these T-shirts? Yeah, this is local slang. Uh, La, a suffix to place <clears throat> emphasis what? Uh, on, a sen on the sentence. Malaysian food is really good. La. Oh, boy. So, La is uh, they use that in uh, in Singapore. Yeah, it's yes, uh, they, do. The, they they they'll be talking and they'll say La, just as uh, the, the La. Oh really? Oh okay. Yeah. Yeah, Alama Alamak means oh no. Alamak. Yeah. Alamak. What part of Alamak <laughs> don't you understand? <laughs> 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 oh bole. Uh, it means Malaysia can do it. What? Really? Oh well. Yeah. Enough of like learning Malay the language. Boy. I'll never. I'll never have to. So. Oh, well, yeah. you're out in public. Man, they really love those towers, don't they? Those are like that's their entire uh, uh, that's identity. That's the right there. Huh? Yep. Well, I mean, it's one. But apparently, if you didn't know it, then they need to work on their branding because the New Yorkers don't know the. Petronas Towers or KL. Yeah, but, but wait a minute. Go back, go, back, go back to that. That was a Keith Herring ripoff, that picture. Somebody really? was trying to do a it's phony a Keith Herring. That's a fruit. Yeah, but it's a phony. <laughs> it, it, if Keith Herring were to have drawn that fruit, he would have drawn it that way. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you might have a point there. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Oh, there's Tarek. Hey, like folks, that. you, you, tuned, you tuned into YouTube tonight. You want to listen to the uh, to the uh, uh, the ramble, and what are you getting? Uh, a trip to the mall. <laughs> <laughs> Inside, yeah. you hear Alex. I could have fooled you. I could have said, "Here's where I am." Yeah. yeah here's where I am, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't get it. Around me, all the indoor malls are going out of business. Of yeah. course, and then. They go, they're opening yeah. up these open air outdoor malls and it's just i especially where i'm at it gets cold in the winter you got snow you got ice yeah, but, you got but all this malls crap. are and, malls are going out of business because the very businesses that uh attracted people to the malls have gone out of business for instance sears used yeah. to actually get the property they were using practically for free because they wanted sears in that mall in order to have a magnet yeah, they call them anchor stores. The anchor stores. Yeah, yeah. And they and they got away with murder for years. I don't know how they went out of business. They never paid rent. Well, know. and that was a thing that I heard about Sears too was saying something how oh they're not gonna actually go out of business because I'm they have the, uh, so valuable the real estate. What what did you say? What were you saying, Jason? I what? didn't get one. No, Jason. I was saying that Sears Thank Sears you. is valuable oh, in real nice, estate nice. that they're not gonna actually go bankrupt. But oh. also I don't know how they did it. Uh, I, I don't. I, well, they're closing all the stores. I mean, they're going. They're going out of business. Like that. Yeah, but they owned them. Yeah. So they could they sell own a lot off. of real estate, right? They yeah. own a lot of real estate. Yeah. yeah. That's what the person was telling me that they're basically they're more valuable as a real estate company than their store itself. Well, right. here's you know here's where they were really stupid. Selling crafts. Well, craft, no. What was Amazon? Craftsman. What was that? What was, what was there before Amazon? doing mail order yeah sears was the original they amazon. had it they had all the structure in place to simply switch it to an online service and they could have been amazon but they but, but there, there was a gap no but they were and wet Alex, i sent you that uh oh, sorry go ahead uh, i sent you that uh article about how best buy was very smart to, and that really saved them kept them alive they just they were right on top of it, and they're doing exactly what you said, you know, getting out in front of it, realizing how people are doing things, and staying alive. And, you know, kudos to that that uh, guy that took over at Best Buy. He deserves his million dollar bonus or whatever. Yeah, well, I uh, I for instance am right now million, watching the price on pennies. something on uh, on uh, Amazon because when it goes low enough, I'm then running down to Best Buy to buy it, and I'll show them the price on Amazon, and they'll meet it. 
Yeah, you know, I just did that. Yeah. So uh, I, bought, I bought the Google Wi-Fi mesh. Yeah. And they and they match the price. Yeah. And without even arguing with you, you just show them the thing on on your iPhone. Yes, uh, Jason. So I'm sorry. This is like an old. I'm a week behind, and this was probably a week ago. Rob, you were talking about getting a. Was it you or was it uh, Phil talking about getting a new coffee maker? Me. So what that does the Keurig coffee at the same time? Did you ever end up getting one or no? Well, um, well, I'm trying to make sure that it was the same conversation because it may be just a coincidence because I have the Bona Vita, which yeah. is one of it the makes best it to coffee. a certain temperature. Yeah. For, so but it, now what's happening to it is I can fill the fill the, the uh, six or eight cups or whatever it is. And it, it'll brew and it'll go down about an inch and then I got to press the button and it'll go down another inch and then I got to press the button and something's wrong with it. So they're replacing it. But I think if this next one, because this will be the third one, mm -hmm. goes bad, I'm going to spend the big money and go for the Technoborn. It's almost 300 bucks. Really? Yeah, it's expensive. Here, but let, it's me, let me get myself. Maker. It's made in the Netherlands. Let me get myself out of... So, uh, I bought a Cuisinart, you know, it's a, a regular coffee maker, a, a craft, and it also has a, a, a K-cup type of thing on the side of it, too. Mm -hmm. And it actually makes a really good cup of coffee. You know, it was like a $200 coffee maker, but I saw it on Amazon for like 80 bucks. I went to Best oh. Buy, and Best Buy had it for like 100 and. 75 or something and I'm like hey Amazon has it for this price I, you know my coffee maker just broke so I would need a coffee maker right now are you guys going to match it and they said yeah and then so I got it for the $80 because they were matching Amazon but then like a week later Amazon's price went up to $150 also wow <laughs> you know what I don't you know so what I, you, you know what kind of amazes me this is uh this is this pisses me off a bit uh, I went out and I bought a bunch of uh, eight uh, terabyte uh, external drives because my new Mac Pro doesn't take any internal drives, so I have to use external drives. And they're very fast because it's all 3.0 and it, it does just fine. Uh, but uh, they were, I got, I got one because it was $129 for eight terabytes. So now a couple of weeks later, I figure I need a new one. I need another one, and I run down there, and it's one hundred and forty-nine dollars. And then Can another you couple. Show them the receipt. Well, I mean, a couple. And, no, it, I couldn't do that. I could. They wouldn't price match with the old price because they couldn't. They wouldn't. Won't do that. Now let me. So the next time I went in, I really needed the eight terabyte, and I grabbed the first one, and suddenly I knows it's one hundred and sixty-nine bucks. So I bought it regretfully. Now I come home about a week later. I go back; they're down to one hundred and twenty-nine dollars at Costco. So I just say, "Hey, your price went down," and they gave me the difference. You know, but how do you go back and forth between one hundred and twenty-nine and then up to one hundred and sixty-nine, and then down to uh, up to one hundred and forty-nine, then up to one hundred and sixty-nine, then drop it back down to one hundred and twenty-nine? You would think that Costco, the price would be consistent every week, or at least it would be consistent in that it would be going down as opposed to jumping up and jumping in the middle and doing all of that. I, so I don't understand that. And I don't understand it on Amazon. This one thing I'm looking for, which was, is the GoPro 7, um, I saw it $159, and then all of a sudden it went up to 185 on on Amazon, and then it went back down to 169, and now it's at 175. Why don't they stay at a single price? Why do they keep fluctuating back and forth? And you noticed that probably when you were looking to to buy that thing from Best Buy, right, Rob? It's just it's just marketing. You know, they that's that's how they they have the schedule of pricing and. Yeah, and that's and that's what they do. They, it's marketing. That's why it's surprise. It would surprise me that uh, they wouldn't match the price. Yeah, 
Uh, now we're back outside, ladies and gentlemen. If you're if you're watching our program tonight yeah, instead of listening to it, uh, we have uh, Bree, and he is in uh, in Malaysia in the wonderful wonderful downtown Kuala Lumpur. There we go. See if you just yeah, Alex. You know when I was uh, in graduate school, um, I what I would do is uh, I would go down to I was at Syracuse. I went to the Syracuse bookstore. And a lot of times they would have remaindered books. Yeah. So, like, you know, you'd have a uh, books that were, you know, for some class at some point. Yeah. And then they weren't using them anymore. And I used to go, what I would do is I would write down their ISBN numbers on a little notebook. And I would go back to my uh, little office for my, where I would, for my graduate school. And I would type in the ISBN in a website called half.com, which um, would sell books for, you know, half price. I think they were bought by eBay eventually. Anyway, I would go in there and I would see how much was it at the bookstore versus how much was it online. And if it was more online and I could pay for the shipping and still make money, I would do it. I paid for my rent several months that way, just buying books and selling books. The, the, the biggest deal, I'll never forget it, was a book on technical, technical television. And I bought it for $5 at the Syracuse Orange Bookstore in Marshall Mall, and I was able to sell it for $120 online. Wow. So apparently, it was very rare. Wow. Yeah, and that was my biggest make I ever made, and I was so happy because I met rent that month easily. Yeah, so, yeah. But I, but I would make $5, 10 $20 regularly on books. So where are so you now? Where, where are you now? What is this? Uh, well, of course, there, there, there are the big towers. Is there a name for those towers, by the way? <clears throat> What's that? Is there a name for those towers? Well, I was showing it to you when I was walking around. I call it Patronus. Patronus. Patronus Towers. The yeah, Patronus is like um, their oil and gas company. It, it was like Exxon or, you know, one of those, or, uh, you know. Uh, it sounds to, me, it sounds to me like a brand of liquor. Hey, I'll, uh, I'll have a bottle of Patronus, please. Yeah, <laughs> Patron. I'll drink to that. Yeah, I'll drink to that. Uh, where is everybody tonight? It's a quiet night tonight. Uh, yes, Jason. Hey, so I know there was the whole big hubbub. Yeah, like I'm a week behind on uh, listening stuff but, uh, with Mike Allen. But yeah. where's Brian been? Oh, Brian He's, called the other night. Got a job. Oh, did he? he got a job. Yeah, he got a job. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so he's... Uh, you know he call he'll he says he'll call when he can but you know the job takes precedence right but definitely yeah i knew he wasn't dead because i think i had seen him online and written to him and so on and he wrote back as opposed to mike allen who played oh we just lost well there there so much for the uh the reception wow. in kuala lumpur uh uh he, uh, as opposed to Mike Allen, who, like, when he disappeared, just completely fell off the face of the earth for about a month, two months almost. Uh, anyway. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, anyway, folks, we have some... Uh, where is everybody? Uh, Jeff usually calls. Uh, uh, well, uh, what the hell? We'll, we'll just we'll sit here with our good friends and we will discuss the world together. Anything griping you at all, Rob, that you... Uh... Usually there is. Tonight there isn't. Yeah. Usually <laughs> everything gripes me. Yeah. How about even wife... smoking a cigar? It's freaking cold. Last week I was in Tampa, Florida. It was 80 degrees, and I enjoyed, a, I think, five cigars. I come back here to snow. We had snow today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. So Today's a changeover day from winter to spring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Welcome back, Bree. We, we see yeah, you. Yeah, I hit the wrong button. I was trying to mute myself because sometimes I'm, I cough. Yeah. And I hit the wrong button. I'm like I'm like the guy from Norway. What's the, what's Richard? <laughs> Richard, Richard, yeah. Well, Where's the button? I don't know where the button is. Oh, yeah. so you're a crackhead? <laughs> <laughs> No, last week he uh, he hit the button and completely. You know the thing is that Skype in their it's like twenty minutes on that. Their wonderful yeah. wisdom of 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 Skype and the new Skype and this new wonderful easier to use Skype. If you push the wrong button, it sends the picture on your screen to everybody. And if you don't know how to get out of it, 
we're stuck there with a picture of your screen, which usually includes all our pictures as well. And it's it's just, it's, it, and so he did that and I just went, just, you know, I gotta hang up on him because I, I can't have this, you know? Because there's no way on my end I can do away with it. And that's the problem with the new Skype. If any of you uh, want to mute somebody, you can probably do it. Yeah, you can. You can, yeah. and, or can you just do it on your machine? Will it affect mine? In other words, if I you, could, I could mute anybody on here. Really? All I have, yeah. All I have to do is uh, click on their names. Okay, and then, mute Jason. And, and then I'm just going to mute Jason right now. He's muted. Okay, Jason, try and talk to us. Wow. He's muted. Wow. Okay, put him back on again. Uh, Jason, you back on? I can't unmute him. You can't unmute him? <laughs> no. Yeah. The the because I've never done it before. I've never muted anybody. Because I but I saw the option now. When I go to unmute, the mute button is grayed out. Yeah. I have three choices: remove from call, see full video feed, send message. Wow. Can't unmute him. Can't unmute Jason. So that means that anybody could fuck up this show. Yeah. Uh, Jason? Jason? Um, do you, is, your, is your volume, is your volume button muted there? Or can you unmute, and can you unmute it? Or, no. Wow. 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 That's interesting. That's fascinating. What what are you doing now, J uh, Rob? What are you doing? We can't hear you. What? Oh, did he must have muted Rob. <laughs> he muted Rob. Oh, geez, <laughs> Almighty, Rob, hang up and call back in. I guess. I mean, well, wait a minute. Let's see if adding Jason to the group um, will solve the problem. Hello, Jason. <laughs> Yeah, to, okay. to uh, unmute Rob. Yeah. Because <laughs> I muted him. No, you can't. Who's Once calling? You can you unmute Rob? Can you can you unmute Rob? He should be unmuted. I hung up. Talk. Talk, Rob. No, he's still <laughs> muted. Oh, jeez <laughs> almighty. Hang up and call back. Hang up and call back. You see, that's what this is this is a wonderful new Skype. You know, the very, yeah. at the very least, you should be able to unmute the person. Yeah, yeah. you can't unmute them. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to add to the group like I used to. Okay, now can you like talk, Rob? Talk, talk, Rob. <laughs> Rob, talk. I'm here, but oh. I hear it ringing. Something's fucked. Yeah, it did yeah. that to me, too. I don't know if it shows yeah. up on the show or no. Are yeah. you hearing that, Alex? Right away. Oh boy! You see, I mean, this is the this is this wonderful <laughs> Skype. They're just so great, you know. Uh, uh, there you I, I, is everything okay now, Rob? I think so. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, but, here's the pro that's that is fucked up because now anybody here can, can do hang anything. Hang up there. callers, can mute callers. Yeah, and it's, but the fact Skype. is, if you could, if you can mute them, you should be able to unmute them. Yeah, that go figure. You know, I mean, I, I find that disgusting. You know, yeah. it, it's just disgusting. And you know what part of the problem is? And you know this for a fact. The guys who build these programs sit in a room somewhere and go, isn't this cool? Doesn't this work great? And they don't use it like anybody else uses it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just power users like us who can find this stuff in a second. But, I mean, that's terrible. You shouldn't be able to ruin a group conversation by having somebody come on and go, oh, I'm just pissed at everybody. Mute, 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 mute. <laughs> Especially the, the whole person... point of this would probably be like a, a group business meeting, mm -hmm. and you're going to have somebody who's in charge. You should, you know, the person who's in charge should be able to initiate the call, and people can't fuck with their feed. Well, but you're right. The I way it is, I, but... I can't mute Alex. He's grayed out, but everybody else is not. Uh -huh. You, Alex is grayed out. Am I grayed out on your machine, Jason? My yes, I'm just going to look. You're yeah. grayed out for mute, but I could remove you from the no, call. No, no, don't just uh, don't <laughs> even. I'm not going to. But <laughs> don't even fuck with it. Don't even fuck with it. 
I know, that might be an interesting, you know. Probably uh, the reason why you can't mute me is because I am the the initiate, the call center. Right. Yeah, but that's okay. weird. Why can I remove you from the yeah, call? Yeah, can remove you from the call. Yeah, yeah, but they're, they're just, now we've told everybody about this and people are going to call <laughs> up the program and they're going to purposely fuck it up. Yeah, Phil's going to go crazy. <laughs> Phil, Phil will silence everybody. Doesn't need to. He just talks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Where's he tonight? Uh, he's out. If if he's out feeding the sharks oh, with yeah, with he's feeding with the sharks, <laughs> he's feeding the sharks with Phil. Uh, with the fishes. What? He's swimming with the fishes. He's swimming with the fishes. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, but he's no, he's out scuba diving for two weeks, and so he's on a boat where I guess he doesn't have Wi-Fi and things like that. So uh, we we don't have him for two weeks, and it's been uh, it's been rather quiet around here. As I as I mentioned, oh look at that! What is that? What is he? How, where did he put his phone? He put his phone on the ground, and. Uh, that's my penis on the other side of the picture. <laughs> um, there is this, by the way, there's this show on, did anybody watch a program called Documentary Now? Now, let me explain this show. It actually is a comedy show, but it purports itself to be a uh, a, a series now in its 52nd year na hosted by Helen Mirren of all people and they play documentaries that have been made and um, then they run what are these faux documentaries that Bill Hader and uh, who's the other guy from Saturday Night Live that he always works with uh, have put together the show along with Seth Meyers who's been writing most of these things and they're hilarious because they're all parodies on documentaries. And the one this week stars Kate Blanchett as a avant-garde artist who does these uh, these uh, art pieces. And it is it's it's Ab Fred Armisen's the other guy. Um, it's a great show. It is just terrific. Uh, and last week was a, a parody of the making of a cast album of a show that while they're making the cast album, they're told it, co clo it was canceled on its first night, but they're gonna make the cast album anyway. And they wrote all this music for this, for this Broadway show called Co-op. And it, is, it was brilliant. So if you ever get a chance, it's on um, you, uh, IFC, the IFC channel. Mm -hmm. um, so I would, uh, I would check it out if you get a chance. It's very, very good. Uh, let me see here. So, uh, uh, Manafort, what do you think about his, uh, his sentence? Everybody's griping about it today. Yeah, no, it's fine. You, it's fine. You're fine with that? Are you, Brian? Yeah, I'm fine. No problem. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Well, bank fraud. You know, I, <laughs> bank fraud. Yeah. Tax I, evasion tax yeah. evasion i mean he 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 pretty well ran the board on his crimes uh but the judge said that he wasn't giving him a lot of time because for the most of his life he'd been good <laughs> he hadn't committed any crimes he never got caught well i'm saying it could it be that he never was caught that was the that was the uh the sum total of it here comes Vernon Nunn, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, he's his picture well, should come in any second now. Alex, the one there was one story that was interesting to me. Yeah, uh, I don't know the truth of it, but it said that uh, Donald Trump uh, watched the Super Bowl, watched the Patriots win the Super Bowl in the same uh, box suite that the owner of the spa. Yeah. That Robert Kirk yes. was caught in. They had a picture of it. Yeah. He was a picture of him together with her. Yeah, so that's interesting. But huh? now was that that wasn't this year. I'm not sure. I don't think that was this year. 
okay. But anyway, the owner of the spa, yeah, there's a picture of him, and it's autographed by Donald Trump in that in that uh, whatever that thing is he does, you know. Yeah. Um, okay, so do I win for best uh, green screen? Yeah, that's the best green screen possible. <laughs> I want to see Phil top this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you don't have any edging or anything. It's really good. It's all about lighting. It's all about lighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think about like, the? You know, what? There's what? something funny here too. I gotta tell. I mean, I'm admitting this. This it's somewhat embarrassing, but um, when I live in Dubai, uh, you know, the women have to, I mean, wear respectful clothing. Mm -hmm. So one of the things when I come to, you know, anywhere else pretty much, even back in the States, but certainly, certainly here in Malaysia, it's just amazing, you know, because the women wear shorts, uh -huh. they wear tank top, they wear, you know, and it's when you live for six years in a place where that's not allowed, Yeah. I mean, you, you know. Well, the you know, the, prefer, the, the preferred mode the preferred mode of de de dress in a lot of those Islamic countries is beekeeper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I, the, the burkas must be awfully hot, aren't they? Or are, uh, uh, well, you know, the, it's a double-edged sword there because on the one hand, you want to stay protected from the sun. Yeah. You know. And, and on the other hand, you are covered up. But uh, it depends on, and you should black. wear technically light colors, not black. You should wear, the men get to wear white, and mm -hmm. the women usually wear black in Dubai. Yeah. But in Southeast Asia, in Malaysia, the, the women wear much more colorful uh, clothing. They would not do that in Saudi or in, or in the Gulf, pretty much. Yeah. They and, stay to black. And, and they do nice trim on it. And the women out today are, are wearing shorts, for instance. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, 80 20 80 what's the, what's the temperature too. currently in uh, Kuala Lumpur oh, let me check on that for and what, you and what time uh, is it it's okay. got to be early no no it's not early um, well, that's why, why, why do you think I can get up and be on um, oh yes it is 12 12 so it is noon mm -hmm. uh, I will have lunch at um, at one o'clock it is currently uh, where I am at uh, 83 degrees Mm -hmm. With high humidity, it mm -hmm. will get up to nine, 92 today. Low will be 73. Okay. And that's, that's the weather forecast from Th Kuala Thank Lumpur. you. And back to you, Alex. In okay, the and now here's Harvey with sports. <laughs> uh, what, did you, what did you think, uh, Vernon, of the uh, Manafort sentence? I thought it was very light. I had to join the Alex Bennett Funhouse tonight, though. The what? Oh, you had to join it. The Alex, the Alex Bennett Funhouse. I was watching a while ago on on YouTube. It was funny. Oh, oh you mean when? We, yeah. Well, just don't push on any of those. If you have a, a <laughs> Skype eight, do not mute anybody. Okay. Uh, I will, Alex. Uh, I will give the honorary Phil reply for Paul Manafort. Oh, okay. Uh, hey, I got too much. I got too much, and. Uh, this just goes to prove that uh, Trump's completely innocent. It, it doesn't mean anything. Wild goose chase. wasn't even related to what uh, he was supposed to be going after. So now it's all ended. Nothing, no collusion. It's all done. Trump's in the clear. And ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, the uh, channeling Phil. The channeling. The, the, the Phil so channel. Friday. Right. The Phil Meyer report. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he, well, he probably you know, would. Back to you in the studio. He, he would make some kind of excuse for the whole thing, you know. Uh, yeah. I, um, uh, I, I'm just, uh, very, uh, uh, I don't know. I have, uh, I have, uh, weird feelings about the Manafort thing. I mean, let's face it. They got him on stuff that he did that has nothing to do with Russia or collusion or anything else. They just happened to find in the midst of all this, of all this checking him out, well, that, that he had done some time, rather though, hinky, Alex. hinky shit, you know. But that happens all the time. In the in 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 the pursuit of one thing, they find other things. Doesn't mean they shouldn't pursue them because yeah. they weren't looking for them. Yeah. What? Uh, uh, yes, Jason. So I, I just have a question because I did send you that message yesterday. Mm. I don't know if you guys talked about it at all or not, 
or if you even uh, knew what it was uh, that uh, BDS uh, uh, Act. What what was that? I didn't understand it. it. So, like on Vice News, they did this thing. It, it's basically state governments have passed a law saying if you're going to participate in this uh, uh, boycott against Israeli products, we're not going to do business with you. So now, who says that? State, state governments. That if you're going to so boycott... The, the federal government passed a bill saying that state governments were allowed to do this, and it, it came from an Israeli lobbying group. So basically, if you want to do business with a state government, you have to sign some type of pledge saying that you are not part of this boycotting is Israel. Suppose you want to boycott Israel because you maybe don't like the way they're treating. Then you can't do business with the, city, the state, state of New York. Well, that's disgusting. That's and that, that that's what I was I was email or texting you about. I because I never heard I, I never heard of this deal. You know yeah, they did yeah, a they good did that in Texas. They did a good thing on Vice News about it, and I just I thought it you know it just it seems anti constitutional you know freedom of speech you know or, yeah. you know why should I be if if I don't want to buy if I business? if I'm a company and I don't want to buy products from Israel because I find them to be an oppressive government let's say which many people do consider them to be uh, then. And let, let's so say, let's say, for some, state that let, the let's say I'm as, let's say I'm them. Islamic and I don't like the way they treat Islamic people in general, and I don't want to do business with them. Uh, the, the state shouldn't have any right to say whether I can do business with them or not. You know, I'm not being anti-Semitic. I am being anti-Israel. It doesn't matter. You know, and, and then I was looking at that. And then See, I'm here's, here's, I, I, okay, here's the thing that makes me sick as a Jew, okay, is that they equate being against Israel b with being anti-Semitic, and the two have nothing to do with each other. Well, and that's what I, I was going toward, was that uh, the uh, congresswoman from, where is uh, she's from, who has been getting all this yeah, shit yeah, from the congresswoman, Minnesota. The congr congresswoman from Dubai, go ahead. So, you know, what I'm listening to what she's saying is she's smiling, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm listening to what she's saying. And I really I really don't have too much to argue against what she's saying. She's talking well, about lobbying from Israel. Everybody, everybody, everybody of everybody was was making a big deal about what she tweeted and stuff like that. And uh, then when people when I ask people, OK, well, what did she tweet? They didn't know. They just heard that it was anti-Semitic. And then I went and read it, and I went, it's kind of like, you know, I understand. Hey, look, I understand if she has a hard-on for Israel. She happens to be Muslim and uh, Islamic, and, and uh, uh, Israel has put itself in the position of being the enemy of Islam. Okay? So you're, you're <clears throat> kind of making a decision there based on, hey, which team are you rooting for? But she's being called anti-Semitic for that, and the stupid part about that is she can't possibly be anti-Semitic because she is because Semitic. She's, Muslim. she's Semitic. Yes, uh, yes, Bree. Well, she's not. She's not Semitic uh, yes, because she's... Uh, no, uh, that word is related to those who spoke a, an ancient language that's based from the Semitic language. She's actually from Som uh, Somalia. Somalia. They're but religion Afro wise. Um, Her no, religion it, is part of the Semitic. No, no, it's no, no. But Islam, no, Islam is a is a Semitic religion. I would disagree. No. Well, you're going to have to disagree with Muslims all over the okay. face of the earth. Well, no. It, it, okay, if somebody's online, just just Google definition for Semite. And you'll see that it's based on language, not ethnicity or nationality or religion. Okay, let me see here. Let me look up uh, Semite. But I mean, uh, but you're welcome to believe whatever you want. I mean, the world is polysemitic. Uh, I'm from Mars. Uh, I was at the moon yesterday. I mean, oh, you know, I, you, you I, can I, believe whatever you want, but weather. facts are facts. Men are from Mars. Yeah. Well, it says it's from the uh, biblical Hebrew, term for an ethnic, uh, cultural, or racial group who speak or spoke the Semitic languages. There you go. 
Okay. Yeah, and now look up look up languages of Somalia. And it also Somalia says it also big. says Semite is the definition is a person with an exceptionally big nose who's good with money. <laughs> so. And can cut diamonds. <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing, Alex. There yes. was a, also a story in West Virginia. Yeah. Uh, there was a poster where she was placed on the poster, yeah. and they say 9/11 never forget. And then they have her image, and it says apparently we've forgotten. That didn't get anywhere the new news coverage of what no. she said about APAC. Now that that is hypocritical of our media and of our system. Highly hypocritical. Well, here, I think she's exposing that. Here was the insanity. We talked about this last night. Is that Congress felt compelled to pass a resolution against hate? And I'm going. You have to. You have to pass a resolution for that. I mean, isn't but that just a given? You know, nah. the thing that kills me. Twenty-three is... Republicans voted against it. <laughs> yes. Well, they're for hate. The thing that kills me is, is it's been for years that they've talked about how we uh, put so much money into Israel for – it's basically to wash the money for political contributions. And that's mm -hmm. basically all she was acknowledging. And if there's any truth to that, how – you know, and that's – why are so many people coming out against it? Because maybe they're taking part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, I just, I just, I, I just felt that from what I read that she said, I, I didn't see how it was so blatantly anti-Semitic, you know. And I'm a Jew; I should be the first one bothered by somebody who says something anti-Semitic. To me, it seemed no, like she was more we... speaking out about lobbying yeah. groups from other countries. Yes, Bree. The problem is, can't we have a conversation anymore? I mean, it's always this, you know. Uh, immediately name calling and people don't even have the facts they never have the facts I mean who lets facts get in, get in the way right I mean you're entitled to your opinion but you're not entitled to your fact and you know I every single day I have to tell I have to correct people about something they think but it's not really that way but hey it's okay you want to believe that uh, you know I'm not here to stop you yeah. I'm just telling you what the truth is you know, and as close as we can get to truth, I mean, in the humanities and social sciences, it's not like it's a natural science. And, and even even there, you can you can play with things. I I always tell my students, you know, one plus one equals three, and they're like, no, no, you know, that that's mathematics. Well, one man, one woman meet, have a baby, they make three, and that's three. So that's one plus one equal equals three. You know, because in the humanities and social sciences, we can make these you know polysemic arguments. But yeah. what I don't like is you know it's the sign of being educated that you can be exposed to ideas, that you can discuss ideas, and that doesn't mean that you have to adopt them, make them your own, or whatever, but you have to have the ability to have a legitimate conversation about it. Let's face facts, we do not, we cannot seemingly have those discussions anymore in our country. Well, here's as what bothers me. somebody he hears Trump, he he as soon as somebody hears AOT, yeah. boom. He here's what bothered me, and I said this again, I said this last night, was that, isn't it funny that the people who are yelling the loudest uh, uh, about it being anti-Semitic, what she had said, uh, were white Southerners who weren't Jewish. You know, it's always, the people are always complaining, it's like, don't you get a little sick sometimes, Charlie, when uh, somebody says, that's offensive to black people, and you're going, why'd you ask some black people? You know, you're white, how are you, you're telling me what I'm supposed to find offensive? Let me figure that one out for myself. You know. Uh, I'm not that easily offended, by the way, but there are things that offend me. I mean, it used to bother me when people, and it was an expression in the language, used to say, well, I'm, I went to this car dealer and I Jewed him down. That one always yeah, bothered me. Sure. For some reason, that always bothered me. I just learned that recently as <laughs> yeah. an adult. Yeah. <laughs> Jew him down. Jew him down. Yes, uh, Bree. Alex, uh, when I was in uh, Poughkeepsie, I lived in Poughkeepsie, I went to uh, Quiznos, and the guy gave me the wrong change back. And I was in my office, and uh, I was telling my office neighbor, I said, yeah, he gypped me. And she's like, please don't use that word. I said, why? She said, my ancestors are gypsies. And that's where that word That's comes where they from. came from, yeah. 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 So I'm like, oh, sorry. Yeah. And then I, I started to look at a whole bunch of them, like the chink in the armor. You know whether yeah. that whether that refers to Chinese or not. No, that's an interesting. But it doesn't refer to Chinese. In, uh, yeah, in a way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but no, it doesn't. I don't think it refers to a Chinese at all. Did uh, you ever watch that show? Uh, Samantha Bee's husband has this one show, or had, and he was at like a, 
uh, uh, nights of whatever type of dinner thing. It was a, a night themed dinner and you're supposed to shoot the other person. Oh, there's a chink in the armor. The guy takes off his helmet and he's, you know, Chinese. He's like, excuse me? No, that term, I think, came from oh, just... A chink is a chain. It's a, a chain. A style yeah. of chaining or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but... Uh... Uh, yeah. But but I you know I mean it it always it took a lot to offend me, but whenever I hear somebody say he Jewed me down, that kind of bothered me. I don't know why. I, I that 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 bothered me. How about you, Charlie? Anything ever bother you when people would say it? I mean, besides the obvious. Um. You know, well, most of the stereotypes that people would say around me were good. <laughs> oh, okay, fine. Well, you, well, you know, let's re remember the stereotypes. Uh, some stereotypes people don't mind having attributed to them. For instance, if I said, "I hear Charlie that all black people have men have huge penises," <laughs> nobody, uh, no black person is going to say to me, "Well, that. that's racist." What you just yeah. said. They're going to you know, go. They just say fuck. They go. <laughs> they go. Not a stereotype. Yeah, yeah, I've I heard, heard that. Yes, right. You know. Yeah, you and, remember when Jimmy the Greek got into trouble for talking about the athletic ability of blacks? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you know what he did? What he said, and and this is, I always was bothered by that because I don't think he said anything wrong. He may have been historically wrong. I don't know. But what he said was that the reason black people excelled in sports is because they were bred to be strong by slave owners. Yeah. Uh, and that does that make a little bit of sense to you at all? <clears throat> you know, it made sense to me. You know, I mean, uh, uh, yes, Bree. Uh, not to change the subject. I mean, this is related and it will get there, but... I watched on the plane, I watched A Star is Born, and uh, there, did everybody see that movie? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, spoiler alert, but so, oh, all right, right, something happens when she's accepting an award, and everybody is, is abhorred by it, and they can't believe it, and it's crazy. And I thought, in today's day and age, like the, the way we are, I think I would make her more popular and more famous, and, you know, it, everybody treated it like it was a bad thing, but... In our current climate in the U.S., I don't think it would be a shameful thing. There is no shame, you know. You know, somebody was pointing out to me, uh, and I wish I could find the lyrics to it, but a couple of Beatles songs are very, very sexist. Oh, a lot of music it, is. It, 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 there's How one Beatles song in which it, song? Sa it says, you know, I'm going to uh, uh, better run for your life if you can, little girl, you know. Uh, yeah. Stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, what were you saying, if, Rob? You said something. About the, the song that Sinatra sings about, um, you know, you better be, you know, he's talking to women that are married. Mm -hmm. You better, you know, look good when your husband gets home. He's out at the office all day with the, you know, he's out in the world. You better take care of your husband. What's the name of that song? Wives and Lovers? Wives and Lovers. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. He didn't yeah. do that, Run though. to his arms. Yeah, he didn't sing he that song. He you. didn't sing that song. That was Jack Jones. Well, so. I have a copy of it. It's on, it might as well be Swing. Oh, really? It he, is? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one he did with the Count Basie Orchestra with Fly Fly Me to the Moon and all that. Lives and, Wives and Lovers is on there. Oh, really? Okay, I'll check it out. But... Uh, um, oh, a lot of stuff that they used to write was, I mean, yeah, they, they tried to make a big deal out of Baby It's Cold Outside. Yeah, that was that, that's another one. Yeah, it's supposedly We've a rape. There's so many things in our culture that are just going to get, you know, we're going to have to put them away. And uh, or, there's just so much out there. Or we need to just chill out. Yeah. And realize really that some of them. I'm chilling, but. And realize that some know. of them are pretty good songs that were written at a time where this stuff wasn't considered uh, right. uh, verboten. Right. You know, I, I think the problem that we're running into is we're running into a uh, a time in our history where we're starting to ban stuff because it isn't correct. And that when you when you yeah, when you're doing are. that when you're doing that to art and music is there's something very inherently wrong with that. Uh, yeah. To me, it's social media, because that's where all this stuff gains traction. 
Otherwise, this stuff wouldn't gain traction. You yeah. don't think, for instance, the Me Too movement because would be nothing. Uh, the Me Too movement would be nothing without a hashtag. Yeah, I, I, it's it's a way for people to band together. Well, what is that noise? What the hell is that? What is that? Oh, there's a fountain. Oh, I, <laughs> I see the water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't touch my phone. I've got it. I'll show you. I have it propped very precariously. If I touch it, it might fall. I'll send a photo through my other. Oh wait, no, I don't have Wi-Fi. Okay, my other phone doesn't have Wi-Fi, but I'll send it later. Uh, so how is this phone in his hand? But there's a camera from. By the way, name. Patrick, you sent me a note and said that, uh, you know, uh, uh, he says, uh, so this is a thing now. I guess every movie will be examined for its content. You know, so you know what kind, what kind yeah, of. Yeah, there was there's something new that came out last week, and I was I was kind of looking at it with you know incredulity. I can't remember what it was, but it was one of these things where, looking back at something, they're like, okay, we can't do this anymore, we can't have this anymore, and I was like, wow, okay, that's a stretch, but yeah, anymore, you never like, know. It's like baseball, right? There are, there are eras in baseball. There was the dead ball era. There was the pre-steroid era. There's the steroid era. And each one of those eras needs to be judged the, in its time. You can't compare one era to another era. And the same thing is going well, on. Well, who did they, who did right they in baseball put the asterisks by because he may have been on steroids? Uh, Bonds. Gary, Gary Bonds. Uh, uh, yeah, Gary yeah. Bonds. Yeah. Gary Bonds. Yeah. I, I, but, it, it's, but you can't compare eras. You can't take a movie that was made or a song that was written in 1945 and compare it to we, de today's standards. It's either you like the song or you don't like the song. If you don't like it, don't listen to we it. Can't we see can't it. We can't it. see what you're putting up there very well. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the real thing is much better. <laughs> uh, uh, it, 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 yeah, I mean, the thing is, for instance, let's go back to the st whole steroid thing. Why should we put asterisk next to Barry Bond's name? When he, he was cheated. playing, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, he didn't cheat at the time. Oh. No, at the time, you're right. everybody right else was doing it. So in order to be competitive, you had to do it. Does that make sense? And, and and there was nobody saying you can't do it, and then all of a sudden you shouldn't be doing it. Oh, you did it? Oh, well, retroactively we're putting an asterisk next to your name. So I I think that we, we have to, we can't set to the, the, if somebody did something 10 year, 20 years ago, he did something that was in a socially uh, uh, that was socially acceptable at the time and he shouldn't be held responsible for it today when he probably would never do it today and that's all right. that matters is that he right. wouldn't do it today right right yeah y yes uh, Bree I it... know uh, I was waving at someone oh okay <laughs> <laughs> but, but I am I'm in favor of putting the asterisk um, you know just to well, I don't know if on each individual, but maybe just for that. Well, I don't know. I, I, I think that I'm not opposed to it if somebody wants to do it to say that there was something else going on at that time. In fact, I don't mind if they want to do it. I don't. I wouldn't ban it in the first place. I'm in a favor. Take all the drugs you want, and let's see how good yeah, you can play. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I see. Now I think <laughs> that's, that's dangerous because it's that's a bad precedent ability. to set for kids. Would you want your kids to play uh, baseball no. and be on all those drugs? No. I wouldn't want my kid to play baseball, period. <laughs> well, I, I played baseball, and I almost went, you know, I, I, we were junior Bronco champions two years in a row, and I thought that was going to be my future. But I, I ended up not doing it because I just figured the Because you didn't take the long. juice. Yeah. <laughs> If you would have took the juice, maybe you would have went Listen to this. Listen to this. You love the Beatles, right? Yeah. Uh, should, we be play, should we be playing this song any longer? Well, I'd rather see you dead, little girl, than to be with another man. You better keep your head, little girl, 
or you won't know where I am. You better run for your life if you can, little girl. Hide your head in the sand, little girl. Catch you with another man. That's the end, little girl. Wow. Isn't this violence? <laughs> a fucking threat. Uh, well, you know, I'm a wicked guy, and I was born with a jealous mind, and I can't spend my whole life trying just to make you toe the line. There was a big uh, thing that came about. It was this one uh, group. It was kind of house music or whatever. He was saying, raise the pitch up, smack the bitch up. And he was actually talking about training your dog. And then uh, I was listening to that, and I'm like, well, man, there was this other song. I don't remember who was by. It was an oldie. It's played all the time. So why can't you play this song, yeah. but you can play this oldie that's talking about smacking your bitch up? Oh, oh, catch this. Let this be a sermon. I mean, everything I've said. Baby, I'm determined, and I'd rather see you dead. I would have hated that song back then. <laughs> well, we, well but we were, we were dancing to it. Come on. Well, you know, Alex, um, the, the Me Too mov movement has, uh, a lot of times things start in the U.S., and they, they sort of go elsewhere. But, uh, you know, and I can tell you it's definitely making people more aware internationally, but I can get away with a lot more of what I say, like I can get away with more things, especially in Southeast Asia when I lived in Singapore, and even today in, in Malaysia, I can I could still get away with things that I wouldn't say in the States, you know? Yeah, like what? Oh, like, um, okay, let's say that I'm in the shopping mall, uh, or, or let's say I'm going around and I see someone, I can say, good morning, you have a beautiful smile, your smile is so nice, you know, something like that. In New York, they might punch me, you know? But here they wouldn't do that. Or, uh, you know, I, I had a colleague once. We came out of an elevator, and there was just like five or six, a bevy of beauties. And he made some comment. I can't remember exactly what it was. And I was kind of taken aback a little bit because I had just moved there. But they didn't bat an eyelash. They were just like, ho, 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 you know, ha, ha, ha. And it, life went on, you know. Uh, yes, Jason. So I guess maybe there's a question to Bree. Was it uh, Iran? That there's been a women's movement lately for equal rights, do you know? Or uh, well, I mean, yesterday really, was yeah. International Women's Day, it, and it was, was a, it was a big thing in one of these Middle Eastern countries that did a women's. Had, yeah, they have events all over. There were events here last night as well, over by the pavilion. Um, so I mean, every, and we had one in Dubai as well. So these are definitely good things. I, I definitely agree that. You know, we need to move in that direction. I, at the same time, I don't think we got to overdo it, but, you know, that's just well, my it, yeah. I, I just really yeah. think that uh, that's actually going to be a really big cultural change to whatever. Yeah. I, I thought it was Iran. And, yeah, you know, if well, they definitely got, they have that. If that was that big of a movement there and anything comes from it, that, you know, that's well, where you send if you send, a, really if you send, a, if you send a tweet in an Islam, Islamic country that says, me too, you get stoned. You know, I mean, it's uh, this is just not a a thing they think of. I mean, Saudi Arabia, for all that they're trying to advance things, the only thing they've given women is the right to drive. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but they still have to be covered, right? Well, right, uh, Bree. They, they, there are definitely changes. I, I think uh, one of the biggest changes got talked about last year a lot, but not not really this year. Is that they open up cinemas. In uh, in Saudi Arabia, so you can now go to you know regular movies at the movie theater. Yeah. So that's something new. They were really trying. But but, but I, wait a minute, I, wait, I, wait a minute, Bree. How heavily edited are they? Because you talk about how heavily edited films are in Dubai. Yeah, they they are edited, uh, and it's very similar. They edit it for sort of the Gulf countries, so Saudi Arabia would be included. But they don't always catch everything. There are subtleties. I mean, if you look back to, you know, back to Hill Street Blues on NBC in the 80s, they were getting away with things that the network censors cause couldn't see it. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, and, and so they do that a little bit uh, as well, I think, and, and some of it gets through, but some of it doesn't. I, I've told you before, uh, films that I saw that I wish I hadn't paid for, like uh, Mad Max Fury Road and Entourage, uh, uh, Ang Lee's uh, Lust Caution. These are things you don't want to go see in a movie theater in... Uh, you know, in Singapore or Dubai or Saudi Arabia, because they cut it too much, it doesn't make any sense. Well, yeah. maybe that's why these women movements are happening. And I think when you get a woman's movement, 
and if they can actually push something through, that's when you get real actual, you know, changes in some of these countries totally that are man-based. Yeah. You know, how about you? How well, about that's uh, one of the things. Well, I was going to say, Vernon, how do you feel about this stuff we're talking about? You've been a little quiet tonight. Wait a minute. Vernon, are you awake? <laughs> what? Uh, Vernon, your mic isn't on. My, your mic isn't on. There we go. There you go. How do you feel about all of this? <laughs> Vernon, translate. Well, one, thing, one thing I've... Uh, I've had a little bit of fun sometimes, it, it, half serious, but uh, my wife and I adopted two biracial children, mm -hmm. and any time I hear somebody making some kind of a racial crack, I just say, hey, you want to see a picture of my son? <laughs> <laughs> that shuts them up, right? Well, I'm, I'm, I bet it yeah. shuts them up. You know. So what, biracial? Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, they were both, they were both uh, mixed black and white. Like half and half, or checkered, or yeah, yeah. My yeah. daughter is biracial. The cops came down my road growing when I was growing up, saying a black and white woman escaped from the uh, insane asylum, and my dad said, "So, a black and white woman was a checkered or striped?" Or... <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember when they when they used to always describe a uh, person on the loose black male I think they still do that as a matter of identification yeah. so if you happen to be a black male running down the street anywhere you better watch out black male what color is a stamp yeah of course all my kids are biracial by the way you know your beard is really growing out there uh, 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 Jason and I was just thinking uh, you're getting to look a lot like Aquaman <laughs> He's a pimp, isn't he? <laughs> I had a very thick. I, I cut it when I came here because it's too humid. Ah. I, I'm uh, thinking about getting it totally clean shaven yeah. by Monday. I'm feeling a little gruffy. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so Charlie, have you ever done a DNA test to see what you are? I'm sure I, I, uh, I'm, I didn't. <laughs> I know what happened to Elizabeth Warren, but I, I do have... <laughs> Native American. <laughs> You're not running for president, are you there, Charlie? <laughs> I, no. Hey, Alex, Alex, can I Everybody call you Everybody else out? is. Can I call you out for a minute? Yeah. All right, so when you joke around about calling Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas. Yeah. So if she were to have said that she was part black, would you still joke around and call her Aunt Jemima? Of course. Uh, anyway. Uh... I don't think you would. <laughs> No, uh, the reason I called her that is because I couldn't remember her name, but I, I could remember I what and Trump it called her. a joke, and I think it was part of making fun of Trump. Yeah. But, but let's face it. Let's face it. Doesn't she deserve to get a little heat for having pulled that one off? No, because no, I think she is part Native American. No, she isn't. She is. she, she's got so little in her that if she's, I... If yeah, I, that's something. It, it, one sixteenth. That's and, something. She did belong to a Native American tribe. Okay, my name is Schwarzman, my real name, which means in German, black man. So could I claim I'm a black man? No, because it probably actually meant yes. Smith. because we all are. Because uh, we, we all, all are. We descended from Africa. That's right. That's right. But it actually oh, probably okay. meant from an iron smith. By the way, I, Elizabeth Warren today, it, she's really... She's really playing it very smart in her po political oh, yeah. campaign. She came yeah. out today against uh, Google, Amazon, and uh, Facebook. She's dying. I, told you, I love her. She's dying. Yeah, yeah. She's, and she, she's no, Elizabeth Warren tanky. will not be the nominee. I no, tell you that. no. Uh, I, I have to disagree. I think she's actually doing really good. Uh, anytime I hear her speak, she sounds really good. Hey, and. No. Okay, but she, so but, you think but, she'll be the nominee? I think she might be. No. I'll here, bet here, you hundred gabnet dollars on that. I, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll throw in <laughs> another hundred. I'll gabnet throw in another hundred gabnet dollars. <laughs> okay. Here, the bet is on. He, here's here's the reason why. I think it's either Bernie or Harris. No, J not Bernie. J Jason, we no, live no, in a very. Oh, no. uh, you haven't been watching the burn. 
His, his audience numbers are up there, just like Trump's. And he's raised the most money. Yeah, but that doesn't yeah. that doesn't That's mean that doesn't mean he can win. win. He had every, he has boots on the ground in all those states. That, the only other person who has that is Jared. About him to say he's raising the money. I think. See, here, 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 here listen, listen to me. L listen to me, if, everybody. If I picks Tulsi. Wow. No, I I judge a, a presidential candidate on their winability. And that winability has uh, everything to do today with your physical characteristics, with your speaking characteristics, with your presence, and with your charisma, okay? Because we're living in a very mediaized age. Um, Donald Trump won. Now you're gonna say, he, he doesn't look good, he's not fat and all that, but he was a TV personality. And, and he they knew made him look great. And they made him look great right. on the on the Apprentice. The lighting right. was, you know. So now you're talking about Elizabeth Warren. I'm sorry, she's got the same charisma that Hillary had. You know, I, yep. I, I yep. disagree. And and so far I, as Bernie is concerned, he's your crotchety old uncle. Dude, you know, it was great. But both I, of them, I really think policies, you're you're just you're yeah. spitting out you're spitting out the Russian view. No, this isn't what? the Russian view. No, he, view. Russian view. Yeah, no, I'm I mean, here. That, that's what I'm talking Hillary. about. I want somebody. Is because, he? Because oh, that's why I fucked oh, Hillary because I I, 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 just don't trust her. I just don't trust her. I said and this. I said this. I said all. this last night that to me, Barack Obama. The minute I saw him, I said was the stealth candidate. This was the perfect candidate. Looked good. Sounded good. Had youth on his side. He had all the things that made for a great candidate yeah. who was pretty much Did impervious. Huh? Did you guys see the dancer? Dancing or whatever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I asked him yeah, to do it again for the camera. They looked at me funny, but then they did it. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, so but what all I'm saying is is that, you know, I'm walking back over because I got to go to lunch. Yeah, let's look at who can win. This is really what it's all about, you know, and who well, that's Harris. the thing. I think Elizabeth Warren probably might be the she's right not. person and that's where we actually we just need to get I think her she is stop I, saying I, I, that she's I'm going a woman okay. She's not gonna get okay, it. I'm not saying she's a woman. It's I'm saying she's I'm saying she's unattractive. It, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't be she about her attractiveness. Listen, listen if if if, if she could eyes. run to Tomorrow, I would vote. I, if, I, if she could run tomorrow, I'd vote for AOC because she gives me a hard on. Okay? She's not old enough. She, I know. Yes. And she can she do might have some Native wants. American blood. So what were you not saying, Bree? She can do whatever she wants, right? Yes. Yeah. Anything she wants, I will do. AOC? I'm your guy around the world. You just tell me, I follow. By the way, there there uh, there are a lot of stories in New York about her that like she isn't as quite as as uh, what can we call it as uh, uh, as innocent as you think she is politically and everything else. She has her boyfriend is a millionaire, and she uh. always claimed that she was living in her apartment in the Bronx or wherever she is from, and. Uh, that in fact she was living with her boyfriend uh, in a penthouse somewhere. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, and, and, she can get she and I was told this by somebody, and I went, "So I don't care, you know, as long as she gets the job done." And I'll tell you, yeah. that woman in about a month and a half has has made more noise and gotten people talking more than I think any of these people who are ostensibly candidates have gotten. You know. She, she was living in, in her apartment, but hmm? then she stayed the night at her boyfriend's house. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know, I, I just think that uh, uh, we they don't have a candidate yet that I've seen that is, you know, it, maybe by the time he sullied anybody, including a dog catcher, could beat Donald Trump. But right now, I don't see anybody who can, you know? Uh, and, and and I I'm saying you got to play get somebody who can play rough, you know the only guy that I know could stand up to Trump is probably a B Biden, but he's yesterday's news. But he's yesterday's news and he's too old, okay. And and I'm 79, folks, so don't say I'm ageist, okay. He's too old. But see, I think I think Biden could, you know, he would destroy Trump. But I also, I think Elizabeth Warren would also. She would I just do it in a I more do, educated, 
and I, but, you know, but maybe if, a snooty Jason, type Jason, of, I, she is not in a, she is not a television ready she candidate. Is, I, I just I I think you have some bias. It she not looks like no, it's either. not a bias. <laughs> I'm talking <laughs> I'm talking about sellability. I'm talking about right. winability. Yes, a, a, a Vernon has his hand up. If you guys haven't listened to Jay Inslee, he's the I know governor of Washington State. You guys ought to listen to what he has to say. He he makes some very good points. He's not oh, too old. He's not too liberal. He's uh, you know got a lot of good things. Now he is. He some people say he's a single issue candidate because he is really running, uh, really coming down hard about climate change. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. argued he argued in an interview that climate change is not a single issue item. Climate change affects our economy. Climate change affects a lot of things. Yeah, our survivability so it's not a as issue. a human race. Survivability, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It, our military is concerned about climate change. So, it, it, listen, listen to Jay Inslee sometime if you get an opportunity. Okay. Because he is again a governor, so he knows how to govern. He's been in Congress. He's been at the state level, and he's been at the national level in Congress. So he's got some he's got some chops. Chicken looper. Bree. Yeah, uh, okay, so let's come back to reality. Does anybody really think that a person who is serious has the chops? Uh, you know, is going to make it? I'm sorry. Okay, call me pessimistic, but that's not the way the game's played anymore. The, the game, the gate's the already open, go to and the, the candidates We're all the candidates die. are out of the gate. Huh? Hickenlooper, Hickenlooper. Yeah. I mean, there's too many people. And, and right now, running. right now, here's the, here, will get in. here's the biggest problem. There are just too many people running, and they're all going to have to kind of jump on each other and see who the last person standing is. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and it's going to be a real job to, ma- to make noise more than the next guy. And, and, and we still have to contend with that... Uh former Starbucks CEO who might run. Yeah, but I don't think I don't think anybody's Bloomberg taking him seriously out. anymore. What? Really? Bloomberg is out. No, not Bloomberg. We're not talking about Bloomberg. We're talking Starbucks about Starbucks. Howard Schultz. Howard Schultz. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Tim Horn? And, and... Well, it, uh, I think Howard Schultz hasn't yet said he was going to run, but that he was looking into no, running right. as an independent. Yeah, I don't think he uh, I don't think he's going to because I think the reception to him has not been what he thought it would be. Right. You yeah. know, uh, basically, it's like some people said uh, a month a month ago. I didn't know who Howard Schultz is, and now I do. He's an asshole. You know. So. <laughs> 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 uh, hey, Alex. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to bid you everyone a, a fond farewell uh, until we meet again. Uh, I'll be here all next week. Uh, but I won't be near the towers. Okay. Uh, but I'm meeting a friend for lunch, and I'm okay. gonna get back on my phone. Well, thank you, thank you for messages. your tour today of uh, of uh, of Kuala Lumpur. And yeah, that's thanks what, a lot. It was, I'm so glad I got it. Finally, I got a chance to yeah. you know take you somewhere nice and, and have a nice <laughs> backdrop. Thank you. It was a nice vacation. Thank you. Bye bye. Good weekend, everybody. Okay. And, uh, I will be having a good good weekend here in Malaysia. There he goes. Bye bye. Bye-bye. Okay, okay. So we lost him. Okay. Uh, so we still got uh, four f- fine people here. But all I'm saying is, is that you know we just have to we have to think in terms of winability and survivability in this group of people, and who's going to be able to do it the best. And I just you know I don't see I I couldn't right now I couldn't tell you who's going to get the Democratic nomination, and I don't think any of you can either. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Charles. I think that what hurt Hillary, especially in the three important states that she lost, Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin, was that the vo- the turnout from the Democrats was very low. Now, I think Trump has he's been so horrible that that turnout's not going to be low. It's not going to be low. Runs. But still, I think I, whoever the Democrats put up will beat Trump because the turnout on the Democrat side, because he's such a monster, is going to be but how many up. how many of us can't sit here and honestly say that Hillary was a terrible candidate 
Because I felt she was. Yeah. I, I thought she made every mistake you could make. As I said last night, and I'll say it again, at that debate when he, he was following her like a shark, okay, during the debate, if she, had, she said she felt like turning around to him and saying, back off, creep. If she had done that, she would have won the election. I agree, but I don't think she was a bad candidate. I think that people kept on believing too much about the, oh, you know, she's, you know, what was that? Benghazi. Oh, well, Benghazi. The, the Benghazi. Benghazi. I, 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 to begin with, the Benghazi thing. I didn't any of that crap. Uh, Benghazi was like, never really an issue. They made it an issue. Right, and I didn't never believe it. I just didn't think she, I felt there she was. There too many people that did. I felt that she was disingenuous. There was something about her that but she... That's the same thing that's going on with Elizabeth Warren right now. People no. are saying she's disingenuous, she's not real, she's fake or whatever. I, I just don't believe, and that's, uh, Elizabeth Warren, I really, really, really believe if everybody were to decide to start to get behind her, because I don't think any of the other people who are running on the Democratic side have anything more to offer than what she does. And I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm but, a but, guy, but, and I do believe that a woman has the shot right now and a yeah, woman yeah, should be but, the president but, of the United but, States because they're 52% of our population. And okay, you want a woman? I'll yet. tell you a woman is more electable than she is. Kamala Harris. Yes. Much more electable. Than Absolutely. than, uh, than uh, Elizabeth Warren or, or or Klobuchar, Amy Klobuchar, Amy Klobuchar, uh, yes, yes, another one, yeah, absolutely. And they could also hold their own very nicely against Trump. I know that Kamala Harris would not put up with any shit from from Trump yeah. at a, in a debate. She would say, "Back off, creep," you know. And that I think a lot of people. Today. But yeah, and I think that's another thing. I don't think Trump is even going to make it to the next election. I know everybody thinks that you know, oh, oh there's a possibility he's going to be elected again. But the Mueller report comes out, man. He, he's he's done. Yep, we, I don't think the know, Mueller report's going to really hurt him. I think it's going to be the Southern District of New York that's going to hurt York, him. Yeah, I think the other problem with with uh, with uh, uh, what's what's going to hurt him. Uh, it, I don't think that the Mueller report is ever going to see the light of day, if you want my opinion. I think yeah, that the, think the attorney general is going to just hold it back and say, well, we're just releasing the stuff which we think America can see. But I think at the same time, if they do that, that's It'll gonna leak. Huh? It'll leak. It'll leak, but the leaks don't count. We want the official, you know, report. We want to be able to read it on our own. And, you know. Uh, I, there are enough people out there who really want to get him that they'll get him. Yeah, yeah. But, and if they do suppress it, that'll be a reason to vote against him. Well, but, that, but, but you know, that's you and that's me. But what about the general American public? You know, are you giving them, to, are we giving them a lot of credit for brains? There's only 33% that to support them like Phil does. Yeah, that's Wait, not going to get them elected. If that's we have three percent, if they get out and vote, oh, that's a strong. It's, yeah. it's cultish, cultish. It's cultish. Yeah. Wow. Hey, listen. Uh, it's been good. Nice show tonight. We had uh, a little trip to Kuala Lumpur and and uh, the uh, the big towers over there, and uh, uh, we've had some nice discussion. And uh, so far, it's been a really good week. And I don't know why. It just, something's missing. <laughs> also, the numbers of people watching have gone up dramatically. So, I don't know. Go, go, go figure, you know. That's because you're the shit, Alex. Because I'm the shit, yeah. Why did you say, Vernon? I said you've been discovered. I've been discovered, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, tell your friends, folks. Tell your friends. Well, yeah, thank you. Hey, listen, thank you very much, Charles. Always nice having you here. Always a treat. Uh, thank you, Rob. Uh, hey, you got to make me that promo saying uh, five years. Yeah, I got to figure out if my if I could get my studio to record. You know, yeah. Well, if you could just get a good microphone going, you could call by Skype and we could record it here. You know. Uh, and and uh, thank you so much, Jason. Always love it when you're able to call the program, and it's always nice to have vi Aquaman visit us. Okay. Uh, and uh, thanks to Vernon Nunn as well. Uh, all of you, why don't you give, uh, 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 you know, a big uh, wave goodbye, okay, to those people out there? Yeah, and I'll wave back at you. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's our citizen panel for tonight, and it's been a good one. It's been a nice night. 
just one of those pleasant little evenings. Uh, listen, you got a show coming right up after us. It's called The Intersection. I hope you will call that program. It stars Jack Bishop, and uh, it follows immediately as soon as we're through here. We'll be back on uh, Monday right after Damian Chaplin does The Exchange at 9.30 Eastern Time. We'll be here at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.